project consists in floating storage and regasification unit, which is a unit that our client is going to bring here in Bangladesh. And our project consists in building the infrastructure in order to receive this FSRU. So the system is composed of a mooring system of this FSRU unit, as well as gas export line, in order to bring the gas that is going to be transformed from liquid to gas to the onshore site. During the project execution, we faced a technical constraint. The first one was related to environmental conditions in Bangladesh. We can have some uh, tropical storm, and the monsoon is uh, present five months per year. You can have also some uh, tsunami and earthquake. The second one was uh, linked to the material procurement. We had only two months to procure all the forged items. And the last one was a geotechnical uh, aspect. We received from the client uh, the relay open information lately, and also we had to consider uh, Megason Reaper in the design. This kind of project represents more than 100 different suppliers and subcontractors. It was a very technical and fast-track project. For very technical pieces, we focused on uh, suppliers uh, very recognized in the sector of oil and gas. We implemented uh, an experienced team of expeditors and quality controllers to follow the production and also the quality of the products delivered. On Summit, we had only 16 months from the contract award to the gas-in of the FSR. And actually, this means only 12 months before the installation starts. In 12 months, you have to do the engineering, the procurement, and the fabrication of something like 1,300 tons of structure. So you, you can't do that alone. Uh, you, you must employ third parties, you must uh, rely yourself on, on key players that will help you to deliver the project. So by necessity, you end up with quite a complex and uh, international industrial scheme. First of all, we have our client that is based in Bangladesh, and this is also where the installation site is. Uh, secondly, we have our main partner, Mark Gregor, which is based in Norway. We do the engineering in France, in Norway, in UK. We do the fabrication in six sites in total. So in Europe, we have fabrication of the plug in Spain. We have the fabrication of main critical mooring components in UK. We have the subsea mooring system of the FSRU that is manufactured in Poland. And in China, we do structures like PLEM, Manifold. And finally, we have our logistic base in, uh, in Singapore because there is no facilities in uh, Bangladesh to receive our marine spread. So to coordinate all that, we, we must have the highest professional and experienced people to make sure that there will be no misstep that will derail the process uh, and that all the equipment at the end will be ready on time for the installation. So at the early stage of this project, we make sure to put in place all the planning and scheduling procedures, all the progress measurement and cost control procedures, as well as document control procedures. Secondly, we provide it to all the project managers, all the key milestones and uh, targets to make sure that we know how to reach our goal to complete this project on time. We made a special focus on the risk and opportunities assessment at the beginning of the project to make sure that during the project everyone is involved on this process and we ensure good reporting to our client. We adapted our installation procedure to the environmental conditions we're going to have on site. We knew that we're going to have high current and also we would have a low visibility on site and hence the needs to either remove the diving activities or to improve their efficiency. And one aspect of this approach is what we did with the installation heads on the plane, which is an appendices which secures the flexible on the seabed in between two tides. It makes the work safer and efficient, both for the products and for the divers. Le PLEM sur ce projet, sur SLNG, c'était un peu la partie, l'élément central de toutes les structures qu'on a installées. C'était à la fois la plus grosse, la plus lourde et la plus complexe. Et c'est sur cette structure qu'il y avait le plus de travail de préparation, le plus de vannes, le plus de contrôles à effectuer sur le plan de la qualité des travaux, de l'implication de tous les services. C'était un peu un grand challenge. Et comme euh, un bonheur n'arrive jamais seul, c'était aussi la première structure qu'on a dû installer. Donc ce jour-là, un stress extraordinaire, euh, sans égal, à régner à bord de, de la barge du matin au soir avant l'installation et du soir jusqu'au matin, parce que ça, ça a duré toute la nuit, pour l'installation. La structure s'est révélée avoir un centre de gravité qui était très haut, qui nous a posé 
quelques petits soucis pour la planter dans le sol. C'était aussi la première structure dont on l'installait et la première fois qu'on utilisait les services de succion de SPT. Donc pas mal de petites difficultés pendant la nuit qui m'ont amené à être assez pessimiste jusqu'au lever du soleil et au moment où on a pu conclure qu'on avait réussi l'installation du plein. The main aim of the landing pad is to allow the plug to rest on it in case of really bad weather. Was it difficult to install? Not really, because that was just another heavy lift and another suction part to install. So that wasn't really difficult to just, you lift it from the deck, you pass the splash zone and then on the seabed, and then you perform suction with the suction pump installed on it. It took us maybe six hours from the lift of the deck to the completion of the suction. The suction anchor is basically um, the foundation of uh, our uh, offshore plug mooring system. The suction pie is not something very unusual in that industry because it used to be developed in the 80s. However, their installation needs to be studied very carefully. As an example, the geotechnics can be very detrimental for the installation and hence the needs for very good engineering. The most uh, risky part for us is that during the heavy lift also our uh, control umbilical is uh, overboard during that uh, heavy lift for controlling the pump skit for all the parameters starting and running the pumps. So after everything is on the seabed we are starting up the pumps and create a pressure difference so the pile is pushing into the seabed and that's basically it what we're doing now. The dynamic riser was kind of blend of constraint, both because the product was complex and also because our clients had special requirements. The product was complex because it's a flexible riser in lazy wave configuration with a quite complex tethering system. And on top of these constraints, we added an umbilical in piggyback. With regard to the client, he wanted to have as less as possible water in the bore of its flexible. And we managed to adapt our procedure to achieve such requirements. We, uh, we take the 14 inch riser off the, off the reel and so we basically pair it on the reel pulling up on the crane and deploy it down into the water column. Uh, we pair it on the riser until we get to uh, the, the depth of the plem 
and that's when we have our first kind of major diving operation is to make the connection of the riser to the uh, to the phlegm side. Once this uh, flange connection is complete, we basically can then start to uh, to lay away. And while we're laying away, we have to install the buoyancy modules on the riser at the work platform. Obviously, this riser also has the uh, small umbilical um, saddle back to it. We install two tether clamps and uh, then overboard a two-ton clump weight and a, uh, a buoy, which is then uh, all connected to a gravity anchor, which we lower down to the, uh, the seabed. Once the gravity anchor is on the seabed, we can then continue to lay away the second half of the, uh, the riser, installing the buoyancy as we go. Uh, and that brings us to the second end over operation, where we basically pass the second end of the riser and the umbilical over the chute. We, uh, we then perform a demegging because this, uh, this riser has been flooded with chemicals to ensure it has a heavy weight and it's not too floaty when it's in the water. And bringing the riser away from the work platform and back on deck uh, and making the connection with the plug, um, which we will then lower overboard um, onto the landing pad at a later date. We arrived uh, two days ago uh, with this barge uh, loaded in Singapore. We load on board uh, all uh, incorporated items for the project and also we mobilize a complete uh, flotel to accommodate uh, all the crew. We have to face uh, on this site uh, different uh, issues. First, that uh, we are in total uh, remote uh, area, so we have uh, to be completely independent, uh, facing uh, different kind of uh, problems with uh, local community first and also technical problems. La première phase en fait, ça a été de récupérer donc la, la, la plateforme qui était sur la barge et donc on s'est déplacé euh, sur tout le chemin avec la grue donc pour venir sur le, le worksite pour pouvoir euh, installer la, la plateforme. De là, nous avons euh, préparé donc les niveaux euh, de manière à ce qu'on puisse poser notre plateforme bien de niveau et qu'elle soit stable bien sûr avec du sable. Quand on a enfoncé nos piles donc avec le vibro hydraulique, il euh, y a eu quelques, quelques endroits où c'était beaucoup plus dur, ce qui veut dire que euh, ça rend la, la plateforme beaucoup plus stable aussi. Euh, il faut rencontrer des points durs, il ne faut pas que ça soit euh, complètement euh, fluide, ça descend euh, d'un seul coup. Pour the onshore spool installation, we have two kind of issue challenge. The first one is uh, actually the water level. Uh, the bottom part of the spool is uh, below the water level. So we have to make sure it's dry and clean when we work, depending on the tide and whatever the tide is. The second one is the alignment of the two parts of the spool. We actually face an issue the first time we try, we have a misalignment. So we have to remove the upper part, do a tiny correction and bring it back. And this time fit correctly which was a success thanks to the whole team and uh, the happiness and everybody working with the smiles that's helped a lot to be sure to do the job. For the welding of the spool, we started with beveling the pipe ends using a pipe beveling machine. Then we welded using electrodes so everything was manual from the first pass to the last pass. And after welding, the welds were controlled using manual ultrasonic testing with an external company. So at the end of the fabrication, the spool will be hydro tested and following hydro tests, the spool will be lifted onto a barge and then will go offshore. One of our main concerns is the spool lifting. As it's a bit uh, flexible, we need to take care of, uh, of the spool during the lifting. Once it's achieved correctly, we overboard it and put it in place uh, on the seabed. Two uh, teams of divers work on uh, both flanges at the same time. And uh, despite the current 
and uh, a lot of sand uh, in the area. The diver team released the work in less than 12 days. We just finished to install the eight mooring lines. We took seven days this year. Uh, compared to last year, it was quite an improvement because we improved something like five days. The, the main challenge this year was um, to make sure that no vessel go around the safe area of the plug because we have floating mooring rope laying on the water for something like six hours. In this area, there's a lot of fishermen and uh, we got to make sure that no fishermen cross the line, otherwise it will break the line and break the vessel of the fishermen. So that was the main, the main challenge this year. The team that we have built around the construction, uh, construction phase is a new and young team that performed all together and developed all together through this last year and on which I can count for future projects uh, for Geo Ocean Bay in Bangladesh or in other places. <laughs>